Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 1. In this video, we're going to learn about place value. So the lesson objectives for today, we want to learn basic definitions of terms relating to place value. We want to gain a basic understanding of how our number system works. And additionally, we want to learn how to construct and use a place value chart. All right, let's start out by talking about the whole numbers. So the whole numbers start with zero. So that's your smallest whole number. And then increase in increments of one indefinitely. So I've written here the whole numbers. And look how we've listed zero, the smallest whole number first or in the leftmost position. And then you're going to put a comma. You're going to add one to zero to get to one. So you put your next largest whole number there. And then you can just keep adding one. So then you would go to two, then three, then four, then five. There's not a largest whole number. You can keep just adding one to get to the next largest whole number. So what you'd want to do at some point is stop and put your final comma and then these three dots here. And that's just going to tell you that the pattern continues forever. So after five comes six, then seven, then eight, then nine, and so on and so forth. All right, so now let's talk about what we call the digits. These are the first 10 whole numbers, and they are used to build numbers. So I have here the whole numbers, zero through nine, so the first 10 whole numbers, are referred to as digits. So I've listed them out here, so zero through nine. The whole key is that as we change a digit's position in a number, its value is going to change. So I have here that our number system relies on the digits. So again, that's the first 10 whole numbers and a place value to build each number. So it doesn't matter how large of a number you have or how small of a number you have. You're only going to use the digits to build that number. The key, again, is just as you change the position or the placement of a digit in a number, its value is going to change. That's why we call our number system a place value system. So to show this, let's take a look at four numbers, each containing the digit nine. All right, so what we're going to do is look at the four numbers we have here. So 49, 192, 3,945, and then 9,687. There are some things that we're going to do here that we haven't talked about yet. So just take everything as a given. And then I'm going to fully explain as we move forward. So the first thing is I'm going to write each number in what we call expanded notation. And that is going to be covered in the next lesson. It's just a way that we can write a number such that the value of each digit is fully shown. So for example, something like 49, I could write that as 40 plus 9. Or something like 192, I would say that's 100 plus 90 plus 2. Then something like 3,945, that's going to be 3,000 plus 900 plus 40 plus 5. And then 9,687, that's going to be 9,000 plus 600 plus 80 plus 7. So we'll learn how to do this in the next lesson. But right now, let's just take it as a given and use it to understand what's going on. We have a 9 in each number. So that digit 9. So here, 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 and here. Now look at it in the expanded form of each number. So it's going to be here, 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 and then here. Notice that in the first number, 49, it's just a nine. And that's coming from the fact that the nine is in the ones place there. So its value comes from nine times one, which is nine. Then in the next number, you have 192. Well, this nine is in what we call the tens place. So it's nine times 10 or 90. Then when we get to 3,945, the nine is in the hundreds place. So it's nine times 100 or 900. Then finally, when we get to 9,687, the nine is in the thousands place. So it's nine times a thousand or nine thousand. The main thing here is to understand that as we change the position of that nine, that digit in a number, it's getting a different value. So it's getting its value based on where it is in the number, its position or its placement. Now, as a final example, let's just think about instead of 49, let's write 94. And let's think about the nine here. Let me write this out and say that this is 90 plus well, now this nine is a 90. It's in the tens place. It's nine times 10 or 90. Here, the nine is just a nine, nine times one, which is nine. But notice that these numbers are built with the same two digits, a four and a nine. But this one is 49, which is 40 plus nine. And this is 94, which is 90 plus four. We know that $94 would be more than $49. So obviously these two numbers are not the same, even though they contain the same two digits only. So the position of a digit in a number is going to determine its value. Okay, let's look at what we call a place value chart. So this is a good way to understand how to find the place value for a given digit in a number. So to start off, I'm just going to pick a number 
a smaller number, let's say something like 1,052. And you're just gonna feed this into the place value chart. So provided you're working with a whole number, you can just make your own example. If you're working with a decimal, then you're gonna need an expanded place value chart. We'll cover that later on in the course. For right now, the rightmost digit of your whole number, in this case, it's a two, and that's gonna be in what we call the ones place. I'll talk more about this in a moment, but basically for right now, let's just feed this in to the rightmost position on that place value chart. So that two is gonna go right there, again, where it says ones. Okay, let me get rid of this highlighting so nobody's lost. As I move to the left in my number, I'm gonna match that movement to the left on my place value chart. So this five is now gonna go here where it says tens. I go to the left. This zero is now gonna go in this position that says hundreds. I'm just going to the left. Then I'm gonna go to the left one more time. This one is gonna go into the thousands. So what does it mean to have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, all these things? Where does that come from and what does it mean? Well, the first thing is this is all based on 10. Once you understand that, it becomes very easy to come up with these names. So I'm just gonna start. You see that this says ones here. I'm just gonna write a one. Then as I move to the left, let me just write a 10, let me write 100, and let me write 1000, and I'm just gonna stop there, and I'm gonna show you the pattern. So basically what's happening is, as I move to the left, I'm just multiplying by 10. So one times 10 gives me 10. Then as I move to the left, I'm multiplying by 10. 10 times 10 gives me 100. As I move to the left, I'm just multiplying by 10. So 100 times 10 gives me 1,000. This would continue forever and ever and ever as you move to the left. Now it's also true as you move to the right, you're dividing by 10. We can show that real quick too. So if I took 1,000 and I divide by 10, I get 100. If I take 100 and I divide by 10, I get 10. If I take 10 and I divide by 10, I'm going to get one. So we see the pattern. As we move to the left, we multiply by 10. As we go to the right, we divide by 10. So we can use that to come up with these names. Just remember that the rightmost position here is the ones place. You can just think about that as a one. That's all you have to remember. Then as you move to the left, well, hey, I multiply by 10, so I have a 10. Well, now I say tens. Move to the left, multiply by 10, I get 100, so we say hundreds, and this just continues. So then you'd have thousands, 10 thousands, 100 thousands, millions, 10 millions, 100 millions, billions, 10 billions, 100 billions, trillions, you just keep multiplying by 10. So you'd have 10 trillions, 100 trillions, so on and so forth. Now you can't possibly list everything, so at some point you just stop. Okay, so I've stopped here, but you can stop wherever you want. So now that we understand where these names are coming from and how this pattern works, let's think a little bit about this expanded notation that I showed you earlier. Essentially, we'll get to this in the next lesson in more detail, but for right now, just think about the digit multiplied by its corresponding place value. So you have a one in the thousands place. So basically that's one times a thousand or just 1000. So I'm just gonna write that. Then I'm gonna put plus. You have a zero in the hundreds place. Now the zero there is really a placeholder. It's telling me I don't have any hundreds in this particular number, but I need that zero there to keep these other numbers in their correct positions. Otherwise the number would collapse down and you'd have 152. Well, I don't have 152, I have 1052. So I need that zero there as a placeholder. With expanded notation, if you have a zero somewhere, you could just skip it over. Then I have five tens. So that's five times 10, which is 50. And then plus I have two ones, so that's two times one, which is two. So this is the basic idea behind expanded notation that we saw in the last part of the lesson. All right, so let's just get a little practice writing a number inside of a place value chart. It's a very easy exercise. So 673,452. Let me grab this, come down here and paste this in. I would advise you to get a piece of paper and a pencil and try this on your own. Just make a place value chart. You don't have to go out to the trillions. This number is only gonna go to the hundred thousands. So you could just cut your paper off there. So I'm just gonna take the rightmost digit of this whole number here, this two, put that in the ones place. That's the rightmost position in this place value chart. So I'd put a two here. Again, as I work my way to the left in the number, I'm working my way to the left on the place value chart. So I'm just matching my movement. So this five would go into the tens. This four would go into the hundreds. This three would go into the thousands. This seven would go into the 10 thousands. And the six would go into the hundred thousands. Okay, let's look at a bigger one. So now we have 7,853,922,673. So 7,853,922,673. Let me grab this real quick. Come down here and paste this in. All right, so I'm gonna take my three. 
which is the rightmost position of this whole number. And I'm going to put it in the rightmost position on this place value chart. So again, that's going into the ones place. So I'm going to put a three there and I'm going to work my way to the left in the number and I'm going to match that movement on my place value chart. So I'm going to the left and getting that seven. That's going to be in the tens place. Go to the left. I have a six that's in the hundreds place. Go to the left. I have this two here, which would be in the thousands place. And then go to the left. I have this two, which is going to be in the ten thousands place. And then go to the left. I have a nine that's in the hundred thousands place. Now, as I go to the left, I have a three that's in the millions place. Go to the left. I have a five in the ten millions place. Go to the left. I have an eight in the hundred millions place. And then lastly, I go to the left and have a seven in the billions place. All right, let's look at some standard questions now. So a typical place value test consists of questions that ask for the place value of a specified digit. So we're going to try a few examples. We want to find the place value for each underlined digit. So I went ahead and underlined them. And also I wrote them in a different color and I'm going to come down here and paste this in. We'll do some with the place value chart and then we'll do some without it. It's a really easy thing. Once you do a few examples, you sort of start to memorize the pattern and then it's really, really easy to figure this out. So once again, I'm going to start with the rightmost digit of this whole number. I'm going to put it in the rightmost position in this place value chart. So the one would go here in the ones place. The eight here, I'm going to the left. So I'm mashing that movement on my place value chart. The eight here would go in the tens place. The five here would go in the hundred place, the three here would go in the thousands place, the seven would go in the ten thousands place, and then lastly the six would go in the hundred thousands place. So to answer our question, let me put a little border here. We would say for the three, that's going to be where? That's going to be in the thousands place. So this is in the thousands. And you could put place if you want. I'm just going to put thousands. And then the eight here, well that's going to be in the tens place. So let's put the eight is going to be in the tens place. All right, let's take a look at another example. So here we have 6,358,791. So let me just paste this in here. I'm going to start with the rightmost digit of the number. I'm going to put that into the rightmost position in our place value chart. So this one would go in the ones place. And then I'm going to work my way to the left in the number and then match that in my place value chart. So I'm going to have a nine that's going to be in the tens place, a seven in the hundreds place, an eight in the thousands place, a five in the ten thousands place, a three in the hundred thousands place, and then lastly, a six in the millions place. Now we want to find the place value for the underlying digits. Let me put a little border here. So we have this three, and that's going to be in the hundred thousands place. So let's just write hundred thousands here. And again, you can put place if you want, that's up to you. And then for the other one, it's going to be the seven, which is going to be right here. So that's going to be in the hundreds place. So let's put that the seven is in the hundreds place. All right, let's look at one that's really big. So we have 9 trillion, 551 billion, 72 million, 636,010. So let me paste that in. And we're gonna be looking for the place value of this guy, this nine, this seven, and this three. So again, I'm just gonna feed this into the place value chart. So the zero, the rightmost digit of that number, it's gonna go into the rightmost position of the place value chart. So that zero is in the ones place. Just gonna work my way to the left here and match that in my place value chart. So I'd have a one in the tens place, a zero in the hundreds place, a six in the thousands place, a three in the ten thousands place. Let me go ahead and highlight that since we have so much going on here. And then we're gonna have a six in the hundred thousands place, a two in the millions place, a seven in the ten millions place, so again, that's one of the ones that's underlined. So let me highlight that real quick. And then as we work our way to the left, we have a zero in the hundred millions place, a one in the billions place, a five in the 10 billions place, and then also a five in the hundred billions place. And then lastly, we have a nine in the trillions place. So let me highlight that and that again, because that's underlined. Okay, so really not that bad. Let me put a little border here and I'll slide down just a little bit. And let me put this around the number. Hopefully I can fit everything on the right of this border, but maybe I can't, we'll see. So for the nine, that is gonna be in the trillions place. So I'm just going to write trillions. Again, if you wanna write place, that is up to you. Then for the seven, that is going to be in the 10 millions place. So 10 millions. Again, you could put place there. And then for the three, we are going to say that's in the 10 thousands place. So let's put 10 thousands and again, you could put place. All right, let's try a few without the place value chart. So I'm gonna start with 7,036. So remember, the rightmost position of your whole number, that's in the ones place. You could just write ones like this. And if you're lost, again, as you move to the left, you're just multiplying by 10. So one times 10 is 10. So 
this next position to the left that's in the tens place. And we can keep going even though we have our answer. Multiply 10 by 10, that's 100. So this position right here, this is in the hundreds place. And then I probably can't fit this here. Maybe I could just arrow down here like that. So going to the left one more time, 100 times 10 is 1,000. So this would be in the thousands place. So the answer we want is actually the tens place. Let me put the three over here. That's what's underlined. And we'll say this is in the tens place place. All right, the next example, we have 64,114. I think we probably don't need to write things out at this point. So the rightmost digit of that whole number, again, that's in the ones place, as you move to the left, just multiply by 10. So you'd have the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. So that's what we're looking for. That digit four that's underlined here is going to be in the thousands. So the thousands place. Again, not this four. This four right here would be in the ones place. We're talking about this four specifically that's underlined. That's going to be in the thousands place. All right, let's just look at one more. So a pretty big number. This is 1,998,004,557. So the guy that's underlined here is the nine. Now, one thing that you could do is by reading the number, you immediately say, okay, well, this is one billion. Well, what comes to the right of 1 billion? Again, you could just divide by 10. That's going to be 100 million. So immediately, you know that nine that's underlined is in the 100 millions place. But again, you could start here and say, okay, well, this is the ones. And every time I go to the left, that's going to be times 10. So tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, 10 millions, again, 100 millions. So however you figure that out, this digit here, this nine, is going to be in the hundred. So the hundred millions place. And again, there's two nines here. So specifically, I'm talking about this one right here that's underlined. If you look at the one to the right of it, that would be in the 10 millions place. But we're not talking about that one because it's not underlined. So this one specifically, this nine is in the 100 millions place.